uh, one notice here in Alachua uh, in Florida next Saturday is the St. Augustine Mathiatra. You may remember that a few weeks ago it was supposed to take place, but it was canceled or postponed due to, due to a storm. So that's going to be next Saturday, April 15th, and thus we won't have a Zoom on that day. We're still trying to configure and see if we can do it on Sunday, but there's also a memorial service for one of our friends who passed away at the temple. So we'll have to see how that goes. We'll let you know by emails. This week, however, Lord Kapila Dave continued speaking to his mother, Devahuti, uh, describing pure devotional service and then different grades of living entities. Uh, and we'll head into those texts and follow those uh, teachings. This is April 2023, Lessons 1 and 2, continuing Chapter 29, An Explanation of Devotional Service by Lord Kapiladev. Text 17 is where we began. Lord Kapiladev continued, The pure devotee should execute devotional service by giving the greatest respect to the spiritual master and the acharyas. He should be compassionate to the poor and make friendship with persons who are his equals. But all his activities should be executed under regulation and with control of the senses. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. It is recommended herewith that all the acharyas be given the highest respect. It is stated Guru Su Naramati. Guru Su means unto the acharyas. And naramati means thinking like a common man. To think of the Vaishnavas, the devotees, as belonging to a particular caste or community, to think of the acharyas as ordinary men, or to think of the deity in the temple as being made of stone, wood, or metal, is condemned. Niyamena, one should offer the greatest respect to the acharyas according to the standard regulations. A devotee shows compassion to those, to those poor souls who are wanting in spiritual knowledge by enlightening them in order to elevate them to Krishna consciousness. That is one of the duties of a devotee. He should also make friendships with persons who are on an equal level with himself or who have the same understanding that he does. So Lord Kapiladev is entering into the finer sentiments and consciousness of the devotees and explaining to us, to his mother, to everyone, um, how we should consider, especially other people. This whole section that we're headed into today is dealing with different types of living entity, different gradations, according to the modes of material nature, covering the souls, although we're supposed to see souls in everything. This will also be brought out. In this particular purport, uh, I emphasize, picked out, there's several different points, but the first one is one has to respect the acharyas and spiritual masters. This means that it requires a humble attitude to approach a person uh, with an understanding that we don't know very much. Our consciousness is extremely covered by material nature. As we'll see later on, there are so many different types of living entities whose consciousness is lower or higher. We're extremely fortunate, blessed, to have consciousness where we can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead and our relationship with him. And the Lord makes arrangements by sending his representatives to this world to instruct the conditioned souls how, ab about that relationship. So we're very blessed, but have to have the proper attitude toward that. Along with that, it's like a, like a, uh, like a train track. There's two different tracks to the train. One is our own self-development 
and the other is compassionate and compassion towards other living entities, helping them also uh, advance spiritually. So these two points are the main points in this purport. And Srila uh, Sama, you want to pick someone for the next verses as we continue. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome. Uh, this is, uh, my husband was explaining, this is a very wonderful section, very profound. And uh, in, in helping us to uh, understand how to deal with different kinds of devotees. So that's going to be a very interesting topic. Why don't we start today with Manvantara? Would you like to read Manvantara? Text 18. Am I being heard okay? Yes, very well. Thank you. A devotee should always try to hear about spiritual matters and should always utilize his time in chanting the holy name of the Lord. His behavior should always be straightforward and, and simple. And although he is not envious, but friendly to everyone, he should avoid the company of persons who are not spiritually advanced. Purport. There are 18 qualifications mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, among which is simplicity. One should be without pride. One should not demand unnecessary respect from others. And one should be nonviolent. One should be very tolerant and simple. One should accept the spiritual master. One should control the senses. These are mentioned here and in Bhagavad Gita as well. One should hear from authentic sources how to advance in spiritual life. Such instructions should be taken from the Acharya and should be assimilated. It is especially mentioned here, Nama Sankritanaksha. One should chant the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare, Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, either individually or with others. Lord Chaitanya has given special stress to chanting of these holy names of the Lord as the basic principle of spiritual advancement. Association with persons who are not spiritually advanced is forbidden. Lord Chaitanya advised, Asat Sangha Tayaga. One should avoid persons who are attached to the temporary. Asat is one who is too materially attached, who is not a devotee of the Lord, or who is too attached to women or enjoyable material things. Such a person, according to Vaishnava philosophy, is a person non grata. Krishna. Okay. That's a very full purport. I have one question. Why should we do all these things? Why to protect we, our emotional creeper. Okay, go on. That's good. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. That was that. That kind of sums it up. Uh, you know why should why should all this. Uh, its com culmination is that you want to go back to the verse, Pati? The culmination of the chanting of the holy name, the directions of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, can you say something about that, Mambantara? How it is especially mentioned here, Nam Sankirtan. What should chant? Yeah, again, it's, it's the, the authority, Lord Chaitanya. And the, the instruction in the purport is to respect the Acharya and to chant the holy names given. And so Lord Chaitanya is, is given this special stress to chanting of these holy names. And so we, should, we are to accept that Good. and be happy about it. Yeah, yeah. be happy. Probably. Yeah. Two things, chant and be happy. That, that, mm -hmm. that was a perfect answer, I think. I'm satisfied with that. Does anyone else have something to say about this? Because this is all the instructions in a nutshell right here. This is what we have to do. We have to use our time chanting. And, and, and no matter what anyone says, because guess what? Chanting is the first instruction, the foundation of spiritual life. And it is devotional service. It is devotional service. But what must we do before we chant? Anyone? What's the first item? Begins with an S. 
somebody. No one's right. The Sanskrit begins with an S, right? This the English S. begins with an H. Okay. Hint, hint. Shravanam. Okay, oh, there yeah. you go. So you first have to hear, uh, so then we know what to do, and then we chant the holy name, because now we heard from Lord Chaitanya, we heard from Prabhupada, then we chant, and that's then we're on the path. Thank you. Okay, let's go on now with Sham reading the next verse. Is that all right? Yes, that's good. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Srimad Bhagavatam 32919. When one is fully qualified with all these transcendental attributes and his consciousness is thus completely purified, he is immediately attracted simply by hearing my name or hearing of my transcendental quality. Report. In the beginning of this instruction, the Lord explained to his mother that Madguna Sruti Matrena. Simply by hearing of the name, quality, form, etc., of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one is immediately attracted. A person becomes fully qualified with all transcendental qualities by following the rules and regulations, as recommended in different scriptures. We have developed certain unnecessary qualities by material association, and by following the above process, we become free from that contamination. To develop transcendental qualities, as explained in the previous verse, one must become free from these contaminated qualities. Wow, it, wonderful. Explain, explain one thing to me. Uh, we have developed certain unnecessary qualities by material association, and by following the above process, we become free from that contamination. Mm. Can, you, can you explain that? Well, when I was dropping my uh, godbrother at the airport just uh, two days ago, there's like an x-ray machine for his bags. And I was like, wow, if we actually had good qualities, if we had pure hearts, if we were just honest, so much of this ergo karma, so much of all this like contraptions wouldn't be needed. Right. That's um, true. So, yeah, I guess when we're in contact with material energy, we have a propensity to be uh, become imperfect four ways, right? The propensity to cheat. Um, they're not coming to me right now, but. Mistakes. Mistakes, Isn't... illusioned and. Uh, well, no. yeah. No one's ever happened. Misery. What? What is it, Fatih? The fourth one. Uh, the senses. The senses are not uh, purified. Yeah. Imperfect it, senses. Impure senses. Good. Very good. Thank you. That was a very good description. Anyone have anything else to add to that? Yes. These are oh. these. Uh, Shiva Prabhupada used to, oftentimes, use such perfect logic. Everything has symptoms to them. Uh, like if you want to eat an apple, it has a particular taste. Sugar is sweet. Uh, salty is salty. Uh, think, and you can judge something by its characteristics. So here it's saying that when one is fully qualified with all these transcendental attributes and his consciousness is completely purified, what is the byproduct? What is the characteristic that will develop from such a person who has purified their consciousness. He's immediately attracted simply by hearing my name and hearing my transcendental qualities. So one way to judge for ourselves and our spiritual development is are we becoming more and more interested, enthusiastic and attracted to hearing and doing things for Krishna or uh, is something else happening in our hearts and we're becoming more and more interested in other things. The other day we were listening to a lecture. Srila Prabhupada put it right flat, right on the ground. In the, in the spiritual world, everyone, everything is God conscious. And in the material world, everyone's forgetting Krishna and forgetting God. That's the purpose. That's the two differences. So we're, part, we're, we're following a process to try to, to bring our consciousness more to the spiritual side rather than the other side. So I think it's a perfect uh, example that the qualities are so easily to see in oneself. It's not that you can see it in others. Oftentimes someone may appear that they're not very interested, but we don't see each other all the time or know everyone's inner heart, but we should be able to evaluate our own inner voice and see if this is happening, and then uh, take appropriate steps accordingly. Thank you. 
Very good. Okay, let's go on. Now, you know, sometimes when we read the, all of these verses, there's one or two verses that stand out and that just captures you. And that becomes the foundation of your meditation during, this, during the week. This next verse that we're about to read did that for me. This is like one of the most wonderful, this is a very wonderful verse anyway. Let's, let's go on and we have a very wonderful devotee who will read it for us, Nandaji. It's perfect, it worked out perfect. <laughs> I don't know where you came to that conclusion, so. <laughs> <laughs> Shema uh, Bhagavatam, third canto, chapter 29, text 20. As the chariot of, chariot of air carries an aroma from its source and immediately catches the sense of smell. Similarly, one who constantly engages in devotional service in Krishna consciousness can catch the Supreme Soul who is equally present everywhere. Purport. As a breeze carrying a pleasant fragrance from the garden, from a garden of flowers, at once captures the organ of smell. So one's consciousness, saturated with devotion, can at once capture the transcendental existence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who, in his Paramatma feature, is present everywhere, even in the heart of every living being. The end the individual soul, when fully saturated with Krishna consciousness, can understand the presence of the super soul. It is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita that bhaktiya mama bijanati, a person saturated with devotional service in full Krishna consciousness, can understand the supreme personality of Godhead either as the super soul or as the supreme person. You're muted, Sam. So unmute. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. So three times Prabhupada used that word saturated. Okay, tell us all about this, Nandaji. This is such a wonderful verse. Interesting, interesting. Just now when you said that about emphasizing saturated, saturation is a choice. You know what I mean? You, what you're choosing to saturate yourself with, that's your choice. So mm -hmm. we have to learn to choose to saturate ourselves or always bring our consciousness to hearing about the transcendental activities and pastimes of the Lord and his devotees. And in that way, it the result will be more saturation. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, the result will be that higher taste and that um, immediate attraction that, or the attraction to continue to hear will be more natural, more um, um, spontaneous and and even in a sense more necessary, just like like when you're um, uh, like when you're when you're thirsty, the 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 stronger your thirst is, the more intense you have to get that water or some liquid to saturate your thirst, to quench your thirst. So the stronger our thirst is to hear about Krishna, the more that we're separated from that, the more we have to make endeavor to get it. Anyway. That's what came to mind now. Very good. Uh, I, I just want to add one thing that I, I was thinking about while this was, um, while I was reading this verse, that Krishna in his Paramatma feature, in his all pervasive feature is everywhere. Just like you cannot see the aroma, you can't see it, but you can sense it with your, with your nose, you can smell it, then you get the full picture. But if we can, I don't want to even use the word imagine. How about understand that Krishna is everywhere. He is all pervasive. He is standing in, he, in each atom. It is like he is so ready avail, readily available. And by, by engaging devotion, devotional service, Shravanam Kirtanam, th then you become aware of that. Then we can plug right into where Krishna is. And he's just everywhere. We're the one who are blind. He's just waiting there to, so that we can notice him. It's just uh, th that for me, that was, I kept on, of course, imagining, but seeing Krishna or the form of Krishna, like it, it, he can, there's infinite, you can see infinite forms of Krishna if you like practice this understanding that he is, he is in every molecule even. That was a really wonderful meditation. And, and uh, I thank Prabhupada for, 
making us aware of that. Uh, anything else on this wonderful verse? No? Okie dokie. Uh, thank you, Nandaji. Thank you. I knew she'd said, shed some light on it. Premananda, would you like to work, uh, read the next verse? Yes, the next ma page? Yes, Mahavati. Thank you. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Srimad Bhagavatam 329, 21-24 I am present in every living entity as the super soul. If someone neglects or disregards that super soul everywhere and engages himself in the worship of the deity in the temple, that is simply imitation. One who worships the deity of Godhead in the temples but does not know that the Supreme Lord as Paramatma is situated in every living entity's heart must be in ignorance and is compared to one who offers oblations into ashes. One who offers me respect but is envious of the bodies of others and is therefore a separatist never attains peace of mind because of his inimical, inimical behavior towards other living entities. My dear mother, even if he worships with proper rituals and paraphernalia, a person who is ignorant of my presence in all living entities never pleases me by the worship of my deities in the temple. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, one who worships the deity in the temple and does not show respect to others is a devotee on the material platform in the lowest stage of devotional service. A devotee should try to understand everything in relationship with Krishna and try to serve everything in that spirit. To serve everything means to engage everything in the service of Krishna. The devotee must know that in every living entity, however insignificant he may be, even in an end, God is present. And therefore, every living entity should be kindly treated and should not be subjected to any violence. In modern civilized society, slaughterhouses are regularly maintained and supported by a certain type of religious principle. But without knowledge of the presence of God in every living entity, any so-called advancement of human civilization, either spiritual or material, is to be understood as being in the mode of ignorance. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. So, um, to understand everything in relation to Krishna, what, how, do you, how can you explain that? Well, uh, while I was reading this, I was meditating on the fact that, uh, I mean, as we as we engage in devotional service, do our chanting, hearing, etc., and try to cultivate good qualities, it is also important that we try not to commit any offenses, right? And offenses generally result because we see the other person differently, we think they may be lower than us, and so on. But if we see Krishna in every living entity, then there is less scope for offenses, and that will help us Kirtanya Sadahari. Yeah, right. But what what is, what else is Prabhupada? I think we just read it, that we have to be a little bit discriminate in our association. Even though a devotee sees like that, we, one should associate with people who are spiritually advanced or at least interested, spiritually oriented, and trying to see Krishna in everything. Because in, in, there, there's a big difference between people who are actually trying to endeavor to see Krishna in everything and those who don't even want to hear about that. A, even though that might not be, and maybe we haven't achieved seeing Krishna in everything, mm -hmm. but th that is a devotee, seeing Krishna in everything. That's a really important factor. Yeah. Okay. I, I think another point that you can uh, hook on to that is that even though one may be in the temple worshiping the deities, wearing kuntimala, wearing tilak, it doesn't mean that everyone's on the same platform just because they're performing those activities. Prabhupada, uh, Lord Kapila is pointing out there are people who are worshiping the deity, but having a separatist idea, thinking they're the greatest devotees, whatever it might be. We, did, we read about that earlier. Devotional service in the modes of nature means that they're not really that desirable association. So he's he's actually instructing how how to do this. And as we hooked that with the first point that one has to respect the acharya, respect the teacher, 
like Manvantara was pointing out, first we, we and Samapriya, first we hear, then we understand, then we have to apply. And there's more of a purport to this particular point. Why don't we go on to the next one now, Sama, for the same uh, same topic? Uh, she, I, she, she want, I was gonna I was gonna ask a teacher to read because it's something Fine. that I think Premanand has to talk about later. And teacher gets to read now. Teacher's always enthusiastic about everything in devotional service. Woo. Wonderful quality. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, sweet. Okay, purport continued. <clears throat> it is expressed, <clears throat> excuse me, it is expressed herein that the Lord is always eager to deliver the conditioned souls who have been encaged within material bodies. Devotees are expected to carry the message or desire of the Lord to such conditioned souls and enlighten them with Krishna consciousness. Thus, they may be elevated to transcendental spiritual life and the mission of their lives will be successful. It is prescribed in Bhagavad Gita. If a devotee offers me a small flower, a leaf, some water, or a little fruit, I will accept it. The real purpose is to exhibit one's loving devotion to the Lord. The offerings themselves are secondary. If one has not developed loving devotion to the Lord and simply offers many kinds of foodstuffs, fruits, and flowers without real devotion, the offering will not be accepted by the Lord. We cannot bribe the personality of Godhead. He is so great that our bribery has no value. Real love and devotion is accepted by the Lord. Many valuable foodstuffs may be presented to a person, but if the person is not hungry, all such offerings are useless for him. Similarly, we may offer many valuable items to the deity, but if we have no real sense of devotion, and no real sense of the Lord's presence everywhere, then we are lacking in devotional service. In such a state of ignorance, we cannot offer anything acceptable to the Lord. Okay. So um, this, this, what is this? I'm gonna ask you to first define it. Can you put the words back, Pati? Uh, what, what does this verse and purport mean to you right now? Because I, before I ask you my question. I mean, it, it means if, if you're not sincerely offering um, to the Lord, the Krishna, then, then he doesn't accept. Right. He's not looking for our extravagance. Yeah. Right. It just, even a simple offering of a fruit or a flower or some water, whatever simply you can offer, if you do it in the right mode, I guess, yeah. then the Lord accepts with, you see, with pure satisfaction. That's very good. Yeah, that's it. Now I have another. Patty, could you put the words back? I think it keeps them flipping automatically. But um, there's a very wonderful point about preaching in this little purport here that Prabhupada is, is saying how easy it is to, um, you see someone say here, it is expressed here and the Lord always is always eager to deliver the conditioned souls who have been encaged with the material uh, bodies. Devotees are expected to carry the message or desire of the Lord to such conditioned souls and enlighten them with Krishna consciousness. So it's, it's not that one has to be a great Sankirtan devotee or, uh, distributed hundred books or preach and convince someone to change their life right at that moment. But there are ways that we can uh, 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 fulfill this desire of the Lord very simply. And I think I've mentioned this several times. One of them is prasadam distribution. Very, very simple method to do what pleases Krishna. When we were reading the Bhagavad Gita together at one point, Tisha and another, a few other ladies. And we read that who is very dear to me, who is very dear to me, one who gives this transcendental to knowledge to others, he is very, very dear to the Lord. So uh, wh wh what does everyone think about that kind of easy exchange, giving directly Krishna to someone, and they'll be happy about it. You don't even need to have a big discussion. You know, I, I, has an... I know Faye has done this 
in her office. You have, you put a little bowl with Prasadam candy, Werther's. I, I give out Werther's like anything during the summer on our tour. And people, they're so happy to get this Werther's because that's kind of like a classy little, little um, candy. And, and, and they have no idea. Then people keep coming back for their candies. You know, I see the same people. They, they, they keep coming back to eat the candies and they're taking Krishna. So we, we, if we have an opportunity, teacher, you have, you have a desk, you put some candy on the desk. And, and, and I know my mentor, I don't know, are you allowed to give out candy to your patients, little children here, you want a piece of candy? It's so easy to give Krishna to uh, other people and in in just a, 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 a little, I don't want to say sneaky, but it is a little sneaky and it purifies them. If you're people, you know, if you don't have time for a whole conversation, if you don't want to get in a battle, have a piece of candy. You know what? It, 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 and if, Tisha, can you say something about that? So after we had that class, Dharma Priya, I got some uh, puff mints, you know, and I have them on my desk in this little basket and everybody comes and I offered the mints and uh, the prayers and I chant and put them in there. And so people, all, everybody from the hotel comes to my desk and can I have one, can I have one? I'm like, yes, that's why they're there. And so everybody's taking a lot of, a lot of people eating puff mints at my work now. And I put a, um, you know, I have one of those mini Bhagavad Gita's. It's like this, literally like this big, it's thick and small. And I put one right uh, there by the mints. So, I mean, nobody ever picked it up or anything, but you could see it. Bhagavad Gita, right there by my mints. Good. <laughs> That's wonderful. Very, and people have so many wonderful stories about, we used to, we used to work in a mall giving, selling calendars. We always had the um, mints. People from all over the mall would come every day <laughs> to get, and, and eventually they take a book too, to get purified. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And now let's go on. Bajra, are you with us, Bajraji? Yes, there you are. Good morning, everybody. Text number 25. Performing his prescribed duties, one should worship the deity of the Supreme Person of God until one realizes my presence in his own heart in the hearts of other living entities is your report. One should worship the deity of the Lord until one appreciates the presence of the Lord in every living entity. In other words, one should not be satisfied simply by discharging his duties properly. He must realize his relationship and the relationship for all the living entities with the, with the Supreme Person of God. If he does not understand this, then even though he discharges his prescribed duties, Properly, it is to be understood that he is simply laboring without profit. The word Svokarmakrit in this verse is very significant. Svokarmakrit is one who engages in discharging his prescribed duties. It is not that one who has become a devotee of the Lord or who engages in devotional service should give up his prescribed duties. No one should be lazy under the of devotional service. One has to execute devotional service according to prescribed duties. So karma krit means that one should discharge his duties prescribed for his or him without neglect. Is that it? That's it, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was muted. Yeah. So well, what's the important point that grabs you in this in this um, we have to go back to the to the text if we can. What it's saying is, don't join to Hare Krishna's temple and just think you will get the prasadam two times and do nothing. Do something. Tell you, huh? Do something good. <laughs> and if you are not Hare Krishna, if you are not in Hare Krishna temple, now it's not perform your prescribed duties and offer everything to the Lord. Right. So go on. Okay. So this is another instance here of in the prophet talks about in the purple. <clears throat> worship, 
sorry, I, I can't talk so well. The worship of the deity is one thing, but it doesn't just end there. And we're going to read more about this in these purports. Worship of the deity. And uh, if we don't see Krishna in everyone else's heart, this is also like Bhagavad Gita and probably refers to Bhagavad Gita in some of these purports also. So to, to worship, to understand, what does this mean, though? Should we stop deity worship? Prabhupada says, should we, we, it, or the verse says, uh, when you realize Krishna in the heart, you know, that's, and then, it, then it's, it, it kind of indicates that, um, you know, one should worship the deity as a female supreme personality of God until one realizes his, my presence in his own heart. What does that mean until? Does it mean you stop? Of course not. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't mean you stop. It, it means you're just beginning, right? If you, stop, be you stop everything, probably. So you better continue at the same time. You know, in, in other words, we haven't ever really achieved the ultimate goal. That's, that's Krishna's trickery because it's ever expanding, it's ever expanding. But what happens is we lose the taste for the material world. Material, we, we lose the taste and we keep growing spiritually. I think Chetamayi had a uh, uh, yeah. question or something. Chetamayi. Hari Bold, good morning everyone. Uh, Sama, you asked the question I was going to ask about the word until, and uh, also the answer was given. So thank you, Hari Bold. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, there's also this, um, Bhaja, why don't you read the, the verse that is quoted on top of Bhagavad Gita before we go on. Where is it? Right on top, next to the picture, right here. Oh. Oh, work done and sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work binds when this material world. Therefore, son of Kunti, performer prescribed duties for his satisfaction, and in that way, he will always remain unattached and free from body. Wow. What does that mean, real quick, in a nutshell? It means the perform, perform, perform as per described by Krishna, it means perform the devotional service practically, but if you offer the results of their activities to the Lord. Because Arjun meant Arjun meant to fight, so fight, but fight for me. I'm telling the fight, you fight, fight. Right. Act for Krishna. Whatever we do, we have to do it for Krishna. Right. Whatever we do, that's it's safe. It's safe. And what, but are we allowed to do stuff for ourselves too? What happens if that gets in there? It, because that can be impersonal. That's getting a little deep. How, how do we how do that? How can it how be impersonal if you're doing it for Krishna? Well, if you're not thinking it, well, that's true. Then your real self comes out. If you stop thinking about yourself completely, do you lose yourself? If you stop thinking about yourself completely, you, you, you have to always remember that this is an offering to Krishna, that what you are doing, this is an offering to Krishna. And that's why it's a, it's a loving exchange, right? You have to offer what you're doing to Krishna. It's not that you forget about yourself completely. One, one of the points being made by Lord Kapiladev in this particular verse and in the previous verses was that one, sh one should realize the, the Lord within himself and, when, and within others. So there's no question of losing yourself. It's more of a refinement of understanding who and what you really are and who and what others are. Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Gopa Patni. Gopa, would you like to read? Yes, Haribo. Haribo, Gopaji. Shumad Bhagavatam 329, 26 through 27. Lord Kapila continued. As the blazing fire of death, I cause great fear to whoever makes the least discrimination between himself and other living entities because of a differential outlook. Therefore, through charitable gifts and attention, as well as through friendly behavior, and by viewing all to be alike, one should prov 
propitiate me who abide in all creatures as their very self. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. There are bodily differentiations among all varieties of living entities, but a devotee should not distinguish between one living entity and another on such a basis. A devotee's outlook should be that both the soul and super soul are equally present in all varieties of living entities. Compassion and friendliness do not necessitate falsely elevating someone to the exalted position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We should not, at the same time, misunderstand that the super soul situated in the heart of an animal like a hog and the super soul situated in the heart of a learned Brahmana are different. The super soul in all living entities is the same Supreme Personality of Godhead. By his omnipotency, he can live anywhere and he can create his Vaikuntha situation everywhere. That is his inconceivable potency. Therefore, when Narayan is living in the heart of a hog, he does not become a hog Narayan. He is always Narayan and is unaffected by the body of the hog. Right. So again, Prophet's making two points here. <laughs> And he always he always talks about Prophet always talks about how the Supreme Lord is not influenced by any material situation, right? That that's that's a, a that's a running um, kind of theme in, in everything that Prabhupada teaches the supremacy the supremacy of the Lord. But I was mainly could we could we go back again to the um, I was many wondering about the first verse because that is a very you know this is seeing with equal vision and as a sankirtan devotee you have to see this way right so why don't you read the first verse Lord Kapila continued and and give me a little take on that in relation to sankirtan Lord Kapila continued as the blazing fire of death I cause great fear to whoever makes the least discrimination between himself and other living entities because of a differential outlook. Um, I've just learned from um, you know, Vaisheshika Prabhu that you don't just, just everybody, just don't discriminate in bodily uh, features or uh, prosperities or just everybody, you know, you should greet everyone and see that Krishna is in their super soul is in their heart. And when you're talking to them on Sankirtan, you just try to pray that Krishna in their heart will make them give a donation and take a book. <laughs> you you got you got to approach everyone and. You know, when you when I was in a younger body 40 years ago, I would hardly ever approach older people. But now that I'm in an older body, you know, it, older people, you know, it's like. I don't know, you can that not that you can relate to that older body, but it's like you're giving them a chance, you know, giving right. them a chance to, <laughs> for Christmas. Very good. Uh, it, it's uh, always an adventure. It's always an adventure to go out on Santa Cruz time and to, yeah, but you know, generally. It's okay, on. go ahead. No, I was just no, going to no. say, yeah, if, you, if you discriminate, you know, oh, that that's a family. I can't approach them. Uh, that's a, a a young man. I can't approach him. That's a, you know, that's a very rich looking person. That's a very poor looking person. You can't you can't discriminate. You got to give everybody the mercy. Right. You, give and you get really mercy. surprised too. You get really surprised. Yeah. Very surprised. Sometimes a businessman who looks like he only has money on the mind, he'll be very grateful to receive a book. Very yeah. good. Very good. Um, yeah, even amongst devotees with, in dealing with each other, there are so many we, know, we understand because we're all individuals. We have so many different opinions, so many different ways to look at Krishna, so many different ways that we can serve Krishna. Um, 
we, it, it, this is a very, uh, this particular, oh, there it goes again. Is there something weird in this program? Every time, oh, let's go back one second. Good. That verse indicates that discrimination, thinking himself greater because is Atmavan Manyateja God. I see it like this, and that's the only way to see it. Krishna is very displeased at that kind of behavior. He already has a relationship with all different souls. And who are you to get in the middle of it? Your duty is to try to join it again. Huh? This, is, this is very significant in social behavior even. Okay. We'll go on now with Faye. Faye, would you like to read this? Hi, Krishna Maharaji. Good morning. Good morning. Shumad Bhagavatam 3.29.28. Living entities are superior to inanimate objects. O Blessed Mother, and among them, living entities who display life symptoms are better. Animals with developed consciousness are better than them. And better still are those who have developed sense perception. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The first division is made between dead, stone-like matter and a living organism. A living organism is sometimes manifested even in stone. Experience shows that some hills and mountains grow. This is due to the presence of the soul within that stone. Above that, the next manifestation of living condition is development of consciousness. And the next manifestation is the development of sense perception. In the Moksha Dharm section of the Mahabharata, it is stated that trees have developed sense perception. They can see and smell. We know by experience that trees can see. Sometimes in its growth, a tree changes its course of development to avoid some hindrances. This means that a tree can see. And according to the Mahabharat, a tree can also smell. This indicates the development of sense perception. When you are a botanist, interesting, you got this verse. <laughs> so now explain to us how, first of all, <clears throat> this is a, a species, a species, and uh, how, how does a tree actually see and smell? Okay. If I may, Mataji, refer back to Krishna for a moment. Krishna in his transcendental form can eat with his eyes, can um, smell with his ears, <laughs> because he is transcendental. And as a human, I listen to that and think of that, and I'm amazed because it's something different from my sensory abilities. A tree is an organism that has a way of seeing and hearing or whatever it's doing that's different from the way I am wired or the way I do things. There's a lovely um, scientific word for plant seeking light. It's called geotrophism. They grow towards the light on purpose. They need the light. Even if you take a, a lab situation and hang a flower pot upside down with the soil covered and the plant coming out, the plant's still going to try to turn around and find its way to the light. So what Srila Prabhupada is telling us in this purport, just because it's different, doesn't mean that this organism is without sensory capabilities. And as we studied earlier, um, 
and thanks to Premananda Das's many charts, we could see the breakdown and development of um, sensory activities, um, sensory perception. And if we go back further in our studies, when Dhruva Maharaja Dasa Das was trying to tell us about the difference is between um, the sense of hearing and the, the sense of taste and smell and so forth and correlating them with the densities of earth and water and air. Krishna has a beautiful balance of things always. And just because a tree doesn't have eyes, the same as mine, does not mean that that tree is different or inferior within the heart of that tree. There is still the Lord, the Paramatma, the super soul, and the soul of the tree. Right. So Very if good. I see with equal vision everyone yes. else, then that Paramatma, that super soul, it's in that tree, that, tree, that dog that brahmana so Very good. when you see broadly you can serve broadly you can serve krishna and still approach other living beings with love because you know krishna's in there yes, Paramatma's is. in there hmm. that's is that wonderful that's beautiful mm -hmm. seeing with equal vision mm -hmm. and and you know if you can see the sensory uh, manifestation of a tree. Uh, uh, okay, now, but, but we have to get back to people. We, it's easier sometimes <laughs> to see it in a tree. And <clears throat> people think, oh, the tree is just the century of the person, living entity and we have to respect the tree. But meanwhile, another devotee will say something off of his head, you know. We, we <laughs> sometimes, anyway, we're conditioned so, so that's our big excuse. But we have to keep trying. We have to keep trying to see with equal vision. And uh, because, you know, it's a little puffed up not to, but Krishna is so kind to his devotees. He always makes an arrangement so that we can lose our pride. So that's that's also a good thing. Thank you, Faye. That was beautiful. Thank you. How, about, how about Kate? Would you like to read? Is that where we are? Uh, oh, yeah. Go on. Go on, Kate. Hi, Krishna. Uh, Bhagavatam 3 and 29. Among the living entities who have developed sense perception, those who have developed the sense of taste are better than those who have developed only the sense of touch. Better than them are those who have developed the sense of smell. And better still are those who have developed the sense of hearing. Although Westerners accept that Darwin first expounded the doctrine of evolution, the science of anthropology is not new. The development of the evolutionary process was known long before the Bhagavatam, which was written 5,000 years ago. There are records of statements of Kapila Muni, who was present almost in the beginning of creation. This knowledge has existed since the Vedic time, and all those sequences are disclosed in Vedic literature. The theory of gradual evolution or anthropology is not new to the Vedas. It is said that amongst the trees, there are also evolutionary processes. The different kinds of trees have sense perception. It is said better than the trees are the fish because fish have developed a sense of taste. Better than the fish are the bees who have developed a sense of smell. And better than them are the serpents because serpents have developed a sense of hearing. In the darkness of night, a snake can find it it's edible simply by hearing the frog's pleasant cry. The snake can understand. There is the frog, and he captures the frog simply because of its sound vibration. Unmute, Sama. So this first paragraph in the purport, how um, Prabhupada is explaining that this knowledge has existed way before Darwin came around. It's, it, be, it began with the, at the beginning of the universe and the Vedas describe it. So how do you see that, Faye? How can, I mean, uh, Kate, how can you describe that and, uh, and uh, help us to understand it? 
This is well, eternal. Well, I mean, it makes, it's much more organized and makes and is much more rational to me because when I think of Darwin's theory of or or of the Big Bang theory, right, that it all started out as just by chance. And then it just makes me think that this is not by chance. There is a supreme being in charge in charge of this. This is why, you know, every grain of sand actually looks like a crystal or something. You know, it's much more organized than there is intention behind it. And then it just makes me think about, you know, our intention in our bhakti like, or in our japa, like where is our intention? And this verse also reminded me of like of what we were talking about a couple chapters ago. Or, or, you know, the, with the creation and the, um, what is it? What was what development the of the term? elements, the development of the elements. Yes. And how hearing is the most refined and how that is <clears throat> the essence of, of our practice of our sadhana is, is the shravanam. Right. It's interesting how you said that the big bang theory and and sound, which I've been listening to these Kapila Dave tapes, and probably was talking about how sound is that's the first thing that. Oh, oh I think, Chita, did you? Somebody asked a question about this in the forums how sound is. Yeah. yeah. So actually, it's the first created thing. And, and so if they, they're kind of right when they said it was a big bang, I guess, to a teeny weeny little soul like us. And everything's going to sound very loud that Lord Brahma does. That's going to be like, whoa, you know, big, big bang. But uh, so we were talking about uh, your your uh, your question or your reference to that. That's Chetta. Anyway, that's that was a very good description of of this of this verse, Kate. Thank you so much. So that knowledge, this knowledge did exist. It's, it's amazing that people just have such a small angle of vision that when, if they discover something, that, that's the supreme knowledge, you know? And it didn't exist, just like that. It didn't exist, just like the tree that falls in the, in the forest. If no one is there to hear the sound, it didn't, it didn't make a sound. That, that is such puffed up pride and no sense at all. So in the same way, uh, just because mankind, rebellious mankind in the Western world is not accepting the Vedas does not mean that this knowledge that they're just trying to figure it out has not been revealed before. It's been revealed. It's just a matter of humility to understand it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Kate. Okay. Uh, Chata, you want to read this? Oh, and good. Then, yeah, because this, this will go right into the question I was asking. Okay. Srimad Bhagavatam 3, 29, 30. Better than those living entities who can perceive sound are those who can distinguish between one form and another. Better than them are those who have developed upper and lower sets of teeth. And better still are those who have many legs. Better than them are the quadrupeds. And better still are the human beings. So that's a, that's a wide gamut right there. Wow. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada says in his purport, it is said that certain birds, such as crows, can distinguish one form from another. Living entities that have many legs, like the wasp, are better than plants and grasses, which have no legs. Four legged Legged animals are better than many legged living entities and better than the animals. It's the human being who has only two legs. Okay. Can you say something about this? Because I want you to read the next one too, because that's a little small. It, it's lovely to have it all mapped out. Um, uh, right at the beginning of this verse, it, it describes that those who... Uh, uh, perceive form, in other words, sight is superior to the to hearing or perception of sound. So my question is, why is that um, considered the highest here? Where is uh, I think it was chapter twenty six, where the the mention of hearing as being um, the source of all the other tanmatras, the sense perceptions. 
and, and okay. therefore being the most evolved one? Well, it depends, you know, people might be attracted to hearing lower forms of sounds, you know, it, it, mm. in, in one way, it almost sounds like the earth to me, that, that it's, it's present within every one of the other um, senses above it. Would that be right, Patsy? The other way yeah. around. I say all, other way. All the characteristics of all the other senses are in earth. Yeah. But well, because when we were discussing this before, we were we were thinking that because uh, sound can be used in both ways to evolve us or to make us go down. Sound is you know we're influenced by by the sound by what we hear. We become what we hear. Well, you know, sound uh, is uh, is what, what, what's what's going on here, Sama? Is and and, and to answer your question, Tatamai, or to approach it is that um, the, what's being described is how consciousness of the living beings is evolving. So since sound is one of the first elements, then it would make sense that something can perceive sound from a very base level right. because it exists. So, and, and as consciousness evolves, than language and dis and and dissecting the difference between different forms and the different meanings or or differences of vibration may be also more perceptible as consciousness evolves. But I think what what kind of uh, don't want to lose track of is what is Lord Kapila Dev actually doing? I was going to wait until the chart, but he's actually describing the evolution of consciousness through different forms or that corresponds to different forms. And then finally, he'll come to the point of a pure devotee, which inspires a person who's a human to understand we don't want to go back into a, a lower form of life again, which will be described later in his teachings to his mother. It's called the adverse reactions to sinful activities, is that a person attains the human form has the opportunity to understand his relationship with God, doesn't take advantage of that. The reaction is he goes back into an animal body. Mm. Oh boy, that's that's heavy. Yes. But so we we understand now that sound. I understand. That's the intention. That's the intention. I'm just wondering about uh, hearing as being the most subtle form of all the tanmatras, and. And with, with our human body, as you were saying, there's different kinds of hearing and we become what we hear, but we don't become what we see. And therefore the, the sense of sight must be inferior to, to hearing. Well, you could That's, also be, but what, see, hearing is the way to attain knowledge. Mm -hmm. even, a, it, it, even a snake, when he hears the, 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 the frog, the frog, that's, he, he knows, he, he's attaining knowledge. Hearing, oh, that's, that's hearing. Sound is within all we just concluded. Sound is within all of the objects. Sound is present in, in as, as the progression continues, sound is always there, right? Mm. Sound is the mm. first and it's included in everything else. So, but, and, and, and hearing is, is, a, is the knowledge acquiring sense. It's the knowledge, knowledge acquiring sense. So it Beautiful. depends upon, so you can evolve through hearing. Beautiful. Evolve. I'm also thinking of the uh, progression into this age where we are not able to remember things so well. So we need to put words down on paper and in books. We're, we're looking at right. a book right now. So there's the sense of sight. But many years ago in different ages, it wasn't required. Only hearing was there. And therefore- well, my this this reading this reading and discussing this is considered hearing actually okay when, when you're here when you're reading these books it's it's you're hearing you're hearing you want to keep well, your mind I clear think so what she, you can i think understand. what she's saying sama is that the combination of being able to use the d different senses that's what i'm picking up too is as consciousness yeah. evolves just like with the different elements as they evolve the characteristics of the previous ones are also included. 
similarly, as the living entity evolves and, and is given more opportunity through sensual perception to perceive more, consciousness is also blossoming. Okay, and therefore you're using all the senses to, to acquire that. Yeah, it was a good example you gave, reading Thank and you. hearing. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much for indulging me. It was a great answer. How do you think? Okay, keep reading now, Chita. Chata. Chata. <laughs> Chata. Haribo. Chata. Okay. Shuma Bhagavatam <laughs> 3, 29, 31. Oh, what a nice little triangle that is. Beautiful. Among human beings, the society which is divided according to quality and work is best. And in that society, the intelligent men who are designated as Brahmins are best. Among the Brahmanas, one who has studied the Vedas is the best. And among the Brahmanas who have studied the Vedas, one who knows the actual purport of Veda is the best. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The system of four classifications in human society, according to quality and work, is very scientific. This system of Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras has now become vitiated as the present caste system in India. But it appears that this system has been current a very long time since it is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. A person trained to the stage of understanding the absolute truth is a Brahman. And when such a Brahmana is Veda Gya, he understands the purpose of Veda. The purpose of Veda is to understand the absolute. One who understands the absolute truth in three phases, namely Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagawan, and who understands the term Bhagawan to mean the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is considered to be the best of the Brahmins or a Vaishnav. Okay. <clears throat> So what do you think this has to do with modern society? Well, uh, modern society, first of all, would not even recognize these uh, four distinctive categories. And they consider it to be rather a restriction on, on people by saying, oh, well, we're all equal. We, who, who are you to say that, that one person is a Brahmana? And, and that is the view that uh, there is a uh, that that one is better than the other in terms of their 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 value but actually every person is valuable no matter what their position and we shouldn't ascribe value uh, to these different distinctions yes they each has a different propensity and yes there's a certain evolution that goes along with these four but in terms of value and, and being loved by Krishna, every single one of them has that. And that's what people are fighting for, but they're, they're throwing out this, this cater, categorization because they're thinking that it denies. You know, the uh, you said something, you said the, um, <clears throat> that there, there's an evolution If someone is a Vaisha and likes to plow for the, the land, and is a devotee and off and and doing it just like my husband uses this example one time you know he spoke to a farmer and he and he asked him if he believes in god he said you can't farm without him you can't farm <laughs> without god you know so that so it's not when you're there's nothing wrong to be situated in fact the bhagavad gita recommends that one was situated in his proper position and he's a devotee that's transcendental but in the world today, any kind of individuality of uh, uh, propensity is being stopped. It's just a ludicrous situation and people are not happy because they're trying to achieve things that they're not supposed to. Somebody is perfect at doing one thing and forced to go to college to do something that he has no interest in. He's not, that's not his propensity. So right. It's, right. A, it's, it's a, a sad situation. Beautiful. Oh, we got Ian. 
it Art. perpetuates people feeling inferior. What didn't we just read in that other purport, uh, Prabhupada saying, no one should feel inferior for the, the service that they have to do. Right. So, it was, so, what, what, it's, who are we? This is God's plan. What is, is, is so foolish is the rebellious souls. Ian, did you want to say something? Hare Krishna, everybody. Hare Krishna, Ian. Yeah, so um, there's a part in the Gita which um, it is said that it's better for one to do one's work fortily than doing another person's work. Um, you know, very, very competent. In other words, no, each of us have, I don't know if it's psychosocial or psychophysical, but there's a term for it. Each has his one, one propensities. And they were saying that um, part of our modern system is that, as a teacher, I was saying that um, we're trying to get away from one natural propensity. Uh oh, we lost Ian. Okay, Ian, you, I cannot hear you, my darling. You don't want to put your back. Okay, I went out. Okay. Okay. Go on. Am I back? Yes, you're back. Yes, I was saying that in the educational system, we are trying to put everybody into a certain kind of, I think nowadays they have STEM or STEAM, you know, certain sort of educational system and train. And the idea that one has certain natural propensities is kind of being you know, left behind. Right. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's it's, part of it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It was, it's, yeah. it's so ridiculous. But this is the Kali Yuga, and we're so grateful that we have this Krishna consciousness that we can cultivate. And that's yeah. why when we see things like this, we have to give out a lot of candy and prasadam and tell people they don't have to get frustrated about this. Okay, we're going to go on. Why don't you read this, Ian? This next slide. Okay. okay. Looks like, yeah. Sweet 2932, better than the better than Brahmana who knows the purpose of the Vedas, is, the, is he who can dissipate all doubts and better than him is one who strictly follows the Brahminical principles. Better than him is one who is liberated from all material contamination. And better than him is a pure devotee who executes devotional service without ex expectation of reward. Purple by Srila Prabhupada. Atagya Brahmana refers to one who has made a thorough and then the just study of the absolute truth and who knows that the absolute truth is realized in three different phases, namely Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. If someone not only has this knowledge, but is able to clear all doubts, if questioned about the absolute truth, he is considered better. Further, there may be a learned Brahmana, Vaishnava, who can explain clearly and eradicate all doubts. But if he does not follow the Vaishnava principles, then he is not situated on a higher level. One must be able to clear all doubts and simultaneously be situated in the Brahminical characteristics. Such a person who knows the purpose of the Vedic injunctions, who can employ the principles laid down in the Vedic literatures, and who teaches his disciples in that way is called an Acharya. The position of an Acharya is that he executes devotional service with no desire for elevation to a higher portion of life. Shiddha Prabhupada, he died. Yeah, I, so what do you think about that? Actually, it's the last statement in the purport and in the, uh, the text, without expectation of reward. What, what, when, we, when we expect a reward, what does that indicate? It indicates food of activities, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yes, um, serve, um, do something with something return. Um, right. So, like, like I said, Srila Prabhupada Gija, Srila Prabhupada known as Bhaktivedanta. So, you know, one is a whole ultimate knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So, so to execute devotional service without expectation of material yeah. award, of any re reward, it's just to, to satisfy Krishna, to please yeah. Krishna. Yeah. So, that's what we want. Do yeah. you have anything just to, to add to this? Just to, say, just to say that in terms where uh gradations so you know as we as we read we're coming from you know different um species different you know sense perception and we're going to people you know persons are very but he doesn't preach 
or you know so we're looking at all the gradations are coming t together and finally we're at the point that you know who's an acharya you know one who t teaches by example and yeah. one who doesn't one this doesn't work for any any uh, remuneration in your words i am a servant and i'm doing my service loving devotion and service yeah just please krishna and that's shila yeah. Prabhupada. Yeah. Prabhupada is such a good example yeah all right let's go thank on you. now thank you ian that let's go krishna. on with manvantara would you like to read again and then sham sham go with that after oh wait a minute yeah, then we have to get the chart. Go on. Text 33. Uh, text 33. Therefore, I do not find a greater person than he who has no interest outside of mine and who therefore engages and dedicates all his activities and all his life, everything unto me without cessation. Purport. In this verse, the word sama darshanat means that he no longer has any separate interests. The devotee's interest and the Supreme Personality of Godhead's interests are one. For example, Lord Chaitanya in the mode of a devotee also preached the same philosophy. He preached that Krishna is the worshipful Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and that the interest of his pure devotees is the same as his own. The word akarud means without any sense of proprietorship. Everyone wants to act as the proprietor of his actions so that he can enjoy the result. A devotee, however, has no such desire. He acts because the personality of Godhead wants him to act in a particular way. He has no personal motive. When Lord Chaitanya preached Krishna consciousness, it was not with the purpose that people would call him Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Rather, he preached that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and should be worshiped as such. A devotee who is most confidential servant of the Lord never does anything for his personal account, but does everything for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, it is clearly stated Mai sanatsyata karmana. The devotee works, but he works for the Supreme. It is also stated, Mai arpita manaha. He gives his mind unto me. These are the qualifications of a devotee who, according to this verse, is accepted as the highest of all human beings. That's that. That's. We can see that we've been coming to this point. This Prabhupada is repeating it, and so is Lord Kapila Dave. That the basic foundation. What what can you say about the basic foundation of this? The basic foundation of this verse. Of this verse, and actually, it's, we've been coming toward this with all the other verses that we've been reading. Mm. Read the verse again, and then let me hear what you have to say. Therefore, I do not find a greater person than he who has no interest outside of mine, and who therefore engages and dedicates all his activities and all his life, everything unto me without cessation. When I first read it, when I say I first read it for this class, I immediately was thinking of uh, the reason why Lord Krishna loves Radharani so much, because his internal potency, Srimati Radharani, does just that, engages, she does everything for Krishna. And um, even, you know, some of her behaviors are, are just so pleasing to him, even though they may seem contrary, but they're not, you know, so it gives him so much pleasure. And so I understood that. And then, and then I always wondered why Lord Chaitanya never professed to be Krishna and how the Vedas, pointed to him as Lord Sri Krishna, but he never professed it. But the purport explained that he, he, the mood of the servant is to worship and give all regards to Krishna. So then that explains to me why that is Good. so. Very simple, very simple, right? Just do everything for Krishna, fall in love with Krishna. It's, it's, it's you know, just to have that mentality. 
I'm doing this to please Krishna. You don't have to be a great philosopher. You just have to be a lover of Krishna. So I, I asked Sham to read the next one, but I but but before we do, why don't we get Premananda to explain this? Premananda, you did this um, chart. He's the chart man. You want to explain this, Premananda ji? Well, you have discussed everything right here. Right? Oh, you, if you don't want to explain it, because it is self-explanatory. Yeah, it is. It just uh, shows the different variation of the jivas. I thought a uh, chart form will make it more obvious because we were reading the text and the verses in the purport. So um, basically what um, Lord Kapiladev is saying that there is a gradual uh, gradation of the jivas and, and, and for devotees having equal vision does not mean that the devotee loses discrimination based on gradation of the jivas, right? We should be able to discriminate between jivas and behave accordingly, right? I mean, with whom we should be friendly, with whom we should be merciful, with whom we should, to whom we should give charity. So that understanding of the gradation of the jivas is very important. A human being and a tiger are the same. That doesn't mean that we go and embrace the tiger. So, so that's why it's very important to see this, the, the different types of jivas in different material bodies. This is beautiful. You, put, you, you really are talented in this. It just is a very nice chart to show the evolution. And but that point that you made is also extremely important. That's not. It's not that we're without discrimination. Uh, yeah. You know. And also, Lord Kapila devotees, he say, uh, one should not associate with people who are not devotees because we yeah. get influenced. Right? right. There's another one of the famous charts of Premananda. Very well done, Prabhu. And, 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 and the beauty of this is that that pure devotee is the highest, is on the highest platform. And Srila Prabhupada has been teaching us to develop pure devotional service so that you can a pure devotee. It's not yeah. getting into all this very um, technical study of the Vedas, becoming a scholar or those kinds of things. He really wants us to attain the supreme and the most perfect yeah. transcendental position. Well, but we do need to hear and we, knew, we do need to become aware of these things, uh, study, study this philosophy so that we can achieve the goal of mm -hmm. loving Krishna. It seems like the most natural thing, right, to love Krishna, uh, but we have to understand all these things before we actually come to the point of pure love, lovers of Krishna. But right. so thank you so much, uh, Premananda, thank you. for this beautiful chart. Um, Sean? Would you like to read Shambhavinda? Yes, thank you, Mama Mata Samapriya. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 3, 29-34. Such a perfect devotee offers respects to every loving entity because he is under the firm conviction that the Supreme Personality of Godhead has entered the body of every living entity as the super soul or controller, purport. A perfect devotee, as described above, does not make the mistake of thinking that because the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Paramatma has entered into the body of every living entity, every living entity has become the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is foolishness. Suppose a person enters into a room, that does not mean that the room has become that person. Similarly, that the Supreme Lord has entered into each of the 8,400,000 particular types of material bodies does not mean that each of these bodies has become the Supreme Lord. Because the Supreme Lord is present, however, a pure devotee accepts each body as the temple of the Lord. And since the devotee offers respect to such temples and full knowledge, he gives respect to every living entity in relationship with the Lord. Oh, that's beautiful. Why don't you, just a little bit you can say about how each body is a temple of the Lord. That's so beautiful. Uh, this nice picture seems to illustrate that point that Paramatma is in every form, every one of the 8,400,000 species. And um, I guess this is the Samadarshana verse from Bhagavad Gita uh, 518 coincides with this particular verse. And that's and you're familiar with that name very well. Samadarshana. Yes. Uh, <laughs> very nice. Anything else? I actually had the privilege of Brahma Teta Prabhu's association just a number of days ago. And he works as a mediator. That's He works for ESCON Resolve, what did serve in ESCON Resolve. Yeah. And then I, I kind of 
thought like this is like term as a mediator is like a great term for one who understands it, the soul, but also that understands that we live in this world. And so I guess, I guess uh, he was a great example of someone mediating between the two, distinguishing, making distinguish, very good distinct. Good. That's that's very very true. We have to mediate between being spirit souls trying to engage in devotional service but living in the world simultaneously. And that's where our dovetailing of devotional service comes in. Whatever we do, even if it's a material activity, we have to do it to satisfy Krishna. I think that's also what the uh, Bhaktivedanta Institute purpose is, like basically being able to mediate between what we agree with with science um, from the perspective of our, our Shastra. So it's really amazing, it's really amazing. It's amazing, but it's actually logical, right? It's logical to see everything in relation to Krishna, what to speak of science. Krishna is the greatest scientist, you know? But you look, in, is, is that all right? I'll just say one other thing. Just that process of mediating between spiritual knowledge and the material world, how it, like, it creates a, it fuses one's, knowledge of both and increases faith so it's it's actually the way it's created is actually favorable for one's advancement and devotional service perfect that's beautiful <laughs> that you see it like that and that's the proper vision i believe too wonderful thank you let's see now i think this we have two more slides left nanda would you like to read yes ma'am Okay. Oh, dear, my dear mother, O oh daughter of Manu, a devotee who applies the science of devotional service and mystic yoga in this way can achieve the abode of the Supreme Person simply by that devotional service. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Herein, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Kapiladev perfectly explains that the mystic yoga system consisting of eight different kinds of yoga activities has to be performed with the aim of coming to the perfectional stage of bhakti yoga. It is not acceptable for one to be satisfied simply by practicing the sitting postures and thinking himself complete. By meditation, one must attain to the stage of devotional service. Here it is clearly stated, Purusha Purusham Vrajet. Purusha, the living entity, goes to the supreme person. The Purusha, the living entity, goes to the Supreme Person. The Supreme Personality of Godhead and the living entity are qualitatively one. Both are defined as Purusha. The quality of Purusha exists both in the Supreme Godhead and in the living entity. Purusha means enjoyer, and the spirit of enjoyment is present both in the living entity and in the Supreme Lord. The difference is that the quantity of enjoyment is not equal. The living entity cannot experience the same quantity of enjoyment as the Supreme Personality of God in. Purusha, Purusham Vrajet. When the living entity enters into the kingdom of God and cooperates with the Supreme Lord by giving him enjoyment, he enjoys the same facility or the same amount of pleasure. The same? The same, <laughs> the same amount? To an in insignificant degree. Wow. Hari Ram. Finish the sentence. I did. You just didn't hear because you were talking. Okay. Oh. Well, again, uh, let's start the whole sentence. Where we got Purusha. When the living entity enters into the kingdom of God and cooperates with the Supreme Lord by giving him enjoyment, he enjoys the same facility or the same amount of pleasure as a supreme personality of Godhead. Okay. So now you have to explain that. No, I was going to ask you to explain it. No, 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 no. I'm talking too much. You explain it. <laughs> well, I mean, just that little sentence. Um, well, Prabhupada said two sentences earlier, or whatever, how many sentences earlier in the same paragraph, that the Purusha means enjoyer, and the spirit of enjoyment is present both in the living entity and in the Supreme Lord. The difference is, is that the quantity of enjoyment is not equal. And then he says, the living entity cannot experience the same quantity of enjoyment as the Supreme Personality of God. And then he says, he enjoys the same facility or the same amount of pleasure as the Supreme Personality of God. And so it definitely seems like 
a contradiction. Well, but, uh, you know, logic would, would have it that a teeny little living entity like one of us, we have a certain capacity of enjoyment. What to speak of the, the capacity of the Supreme Lord. So he has a greater capacity, but but if we're enjoying through the Lord, it's also infinite. Yep. Does yep. that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah, that explains it nicely. Thank yeah. you. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll go on to the last slide now. And uh, Tisha, would you like to read this? Yes, I'm Priya Mataji. Thank you. Uh, 329. 36. This Purusha, whom the individual soul must approach, is the eternal form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is known as Brahman and Paramatma. He is the transcendental chief personality, and his activities are all spiritual. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In order to distinguish the personality whom the individual soul must approach, it is described herein that this Purusha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the chief amongst all living entities and is the ultimate form of the impersonal Brahman effulgence and Paramatma manifestation. Since he is the origin of the Brahman effulgence and Paramatma manifestation, he is described herewith as the chief personality. It is confirmed in the Kata Upanishad, Nityo Nityanam. There are many eternal living entities, but he is the chief maintainer. Wow. What, does, that, does that give you great joy? <laughs> what? Comfort and joy. <laughs> yeah. Comfort and joy. Yes. That's beautiful. And, and I just have to say one more thing about that. When we were talking before about that other verse, uh, that Nanda read previously, how Krishna is, how the, the, the sense of smell is all, it gets into the nostrils and, and then you can, you can experience that. And Krishna is all pervasive like the Paramatma. And this is, this is actually confirming that. It gives us the same kind of hope. Krishna is, is all pervasive and we get to him through devotional service. We can access, we can access the Lord. What does what does nityo nityananam? What do those it, words? It, it means that from he is a one living entity who is taking care of all the all living entities. He is the supreme living entity who is taking care of all the other living entities. It's us and him is basically what it is. All living entities are being taken care of by Krishna, and each one of us, the most amazing thing, has a relationship, an individual relationship with him. It's, it's astounding how he, he's so all pervasive and perfect and we're little teeny souls and he has a relationship with us. That's amazing to me. Okay. Does anyone else have something to say about, about this? I, I think my husband's, I don't know where he may, may I oh. um, ask a question not directly related to this? Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, we have this new system with the with the with the Sadhu Sangha online, you know, accessing the lessons and so forth. Is there any way to access December uh, 2022's I put it up lessons? for you, Manvantara, when you go into your home page. Yes. After, when you when you log in, you should come to your home page, go yeah. to the top, and then when you look at available courses, December is now visible because you asked oh, okay. for an email, so I did it. Okay, thank you kindly. Sure. It's a new program. Pachi, you want to talk about that and to help? No, relieve? there's a video that shows everything. Okay. Anybody else have something to add? Buddy Bull, it's just, yeah. uh, just a word of thanks to both of you for all the wonderful work you're doing and helping me understand all of this. Oh, really yeah. grateful. Thank you all for the participation. It's a group effort. I think one of the things that uh, we can see from this final verse, not the one about the Purusha, the one before it, just we were talking before about symptoms and characteristics. Lord Kapiladev is giving the uh, result 
my dear mother, O daughter of Manu, a devotee who applies this science of devotional service and mystic yoga in this way, in other words, following his instructions, what is the result? Can achieve the abode of the Supreme Personality of Godhead simply by that devotional service. In other words, there's nothing else that has to be done by performing our devotional services, following his instructions, then the result is that the living entity is purified, becomes qualified uh, to receive the mercy of the Lord and go back to the abode of the Lord and, and enter into that devotional service eternally. So it's a perfect system. To work for Krishna, just to do everything that we do for Krishna. And uh, that helps us to cultivate our relationship with him. Okay. Anyone else want to say something, Sean? Sounds like you have a nice connection with the uh, with the uh, scientists now. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I just, it was really nice to like see how we read all the spiritual knowledge. And of course we have, I don't go into the discussion boards as much as I can, but when we apply it or we have to like state a position and fight for that position and say an argument or a discussion, how like that by, that puts the work, puts the work, the intelligence and the heart and how the philosophy sort of goes in deeper. Good. I would just want to say that it's an amazing experience. Good oh, for nice. you. Good for you. Um, we can all actually experience that kind of thing when we, when we really believe that, uh, that Krishna is our dear most friend and we work only for him. That's, that's beautiful. Uh, Ian, do you want to say something? Yes, as we progress, uh, I think there was a part in the Bhagavad Gita which says that we shouldn't see a difference between the Sankhya Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Because as we progress through, we realize, okay, there are some technical aspects, you know, but ultimately, everything should dovetail into devotion and service. But we shouldn't try to see a difference between an analytical, an analytical study, that is Sankhya Yoga, and Bhakti Yoga. Good. That's, that's my take on it. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. So once again, next Saturday, there won't be a Zoom. And we'll let you know through email if there's going to be one on Sunday or if we're just going to skip to the following uh, Saturday. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.